In 2021, Dibble challenged himself to get one platinum every week for all 52 weeks of the year. He wound up shooting past that and getting 54 platinums. And at the end, when he made a video about it, he said, don't do this challenge. It was awful. It took years off of my life. Don't recommend. But because I am naturally competitive, especially with him, obviously I had to try to beat his 54. So we're aiming for 55 Platinums this year. We're going to do the video in a very similar format. We're going to talk about each game for only 30 seconds, and we're going to give it a score out of 5 for if I recommend it. 5 being Outer Wilds Masterpiece level, 1 being it's buggy, it's glitchy, don't recommend. Let's get started. So this is the Amazing American Circus. It's a deck building game where you play in a circus. You're like a circus owner, and each of your deck... Uh, each of the cards in the deck are dictated by who you have in your axe. It's very buggy on console. It's gotten like three or four patches since I played it though, so it might be okay now. Um, it's got a really cool special where you can just make people look at a really cool puma that you have. Uh, one out of five. Buggy and less patched. This is Mass Effect 2. Um, I really love the Mass Effect series. I had played Mass Effect 1 at the end of 2021, so that's not in this video. But... Replaying Mass Effect 2 really reminded me that I do like Mass Effect 2. I've been pretty staunch supporter that Mass Effect 1 is the best one in the series. But this reminded me that like a lot of what I love about Mass Effect really started in Mass Effect 2, and I don't give it as much credit as it deserves, so I give 4 out of 5. This is Mass Effect 3. Uh, if Mass Effect 2 was a game that maybe I was undervaluing compared to how I should be, uh, Mass Effect 3, I already didn't like, and this reminded me that I was totally justified, and it was way worse than I remembered it being throughout the whole game, not just the ending. I don't like Mass Effect 3 at all. I think I'm gonna give this one, like, a 2 out of 5. I think, stop at Mass Effect 2. Like, it's still, it's good until the end, unlike 3. Like, just bail on that whole thing. Uh, this is Demon Turf. Demon Turf was a game that was recommended to me um, by a bunch of indie top tens. It's kind of like, um, kind of like an old school N sixty four game where like you go into different levels and you have different missions. Um, right here, I'm doing some speed run challenges, which were very fun. Um, I didn't like the art style of this game, but the game itself is solid and it's fun. Uh, I give it a three out of five. Sifu. Sifu was the first game that I played in 2022 that was a 2022 release date. I absolutely adored Sifu. Um, I don't think it's for everybody though. I think it's a fun Platinum. I think even the hard parts of the Platinum are fun to go for. I think it has annoying things like you have all of the moves that you have to do and all the finishers. That's a pain in the butt and that really like that that alone means it can't be a five. So I think I'm gonna give Sifu a four. But, like, if you like the art style, definitely recommend. This is Songbird Symphony. Songbird Symphony was recommended to me by uh, Dan from the Flat Chums, and I didn't love it. Um, I feel bad saying that. I'm sorry, Dan. Um, but it's okay. Um, it's, it's by no means bad. It just, I don't think it was for me. Luckily, the trophy list was pretty easy. If you had to do all of the challenges, if you had to do all the music challenges, this would easily be one of the hardest platinums on my list all year. I give it a 2 out of 5. Elden Ring. Uh, of course, Elden Ring. Uh, 5 out of 5, masterpiece. Elden Ring is is great. Uh, it deserves the goatee win that it got at the Game Awards. Uh, I had a blast playing Elden Ring. I devoured this game. I think I played like 80 hours in 4 days. Uh, definitely an unhealthy amount, but totally worth it. I didn't like it when I first started playing it, but uh, over time it won me over, and like once you get in, you're you're in. This is the Ali Ali World. Ali Ali World is almost an auto runner because like the skateboard just kind of moves on its own, and it's got challenges on every level that are hard but also short, so they're manageable. Um, and I had a lot of fun with Ali Ali World. It's had two DLC uh, since I got the Platinum, and they're great. Like, I go back every time, and I'm like, oh, I have to go back to another game. But it's fun. Um, we'll give it a four. We'll give it a four out of five for Ali Ali World. Return of the Overdin. Return of the Overdin is masterpiece level. Five out of five, no doubt in my mind. Um, I had previously played Return of the Overdin on PC, so this was just going to play it on PlayStation. I thought that enough time would have passed that uh, I would have forgotten enough, but I, I didn't. 
um, unfortunately. These are massive spoilers. Spoilers for the whole video. D like, we have the platinum images popping. Of course they're going to be uh, spoilers. <clears throat> um, this is a short hike. Uh, I like to short hike. I didn't love it. Um, what can I say about a short hike? It's it's fun. I like these small, digestible indie titles that you can play almost in like a day or two. It does a lot of different things. Like there isn't one activity that you just do on repeat. So like there's a lot of go here, do this one thing, and then it's done. And there's a bunch of challenges like that. I give it a three. Um, it's not a must play. It's on a lot of game lists for 2021, but it's okay. Uh, this is Haven. This is made by the same people who made Fury. It's made by the Game Bakers. Uh, and and Haven is like part visual novel, part like purifying the land. It has a combat system. I don't like the combat system. Uh, and when I don't like a combat system, I kind of get turned off of the game. I would give this a two out of five. The story alone is good, uh, but the combat and how you interact with the world, in my opinion, I, don't, I didn't like it that much. This is Telling Lies. I played Telling Lies with my wife. Um, we kind of solved the mystery of what was going on in the game pretty quickly, but then we still have to play for a few more hours. Uh, so I didn't really like it that much. Um, it's also the reason why I'm not really interested in immortality because like, I, like we didn't enjoy this. And one of the main reasons was because it didn't really feel like a game. Uh, and there isn't really like an end state that you trigger. It's just like watch a bunch of clips. So uh, telling lies, we'll give it a two. This is Moss Book 2. Uh, Moss Book 2 is a perfect VR sequel to Moss Book 1. Moss Book 1 is also in VR. It's one of my favorite VR games on PSVR. Moss Book 2 is a better story. It's got better writing. It's got better animation. It's got better combat. Like, it's just in every area of the game, they just, like, stepped it up one notch. And it is, like, really, really good. I, it's like a 3.5 out of 5. This is Batman, Batman Arkham Asylum. I was feeling kind of like weirdly nostalgic at this time, so I played a bunch of games that I had already played in like the 360 era again. So I went back and got the like remastered Batman Arkham Return to Arkham collection and played this. Uh, it really reminded me that like the combat in the Arkham games didn't get good until City. Like Asylum is really janky, uh, but I get it's still a three. It's still good. This Bioshock, so this was my 200th Platinum, 200th Platinum. I went back, I played through Bioshock again. Good game, still like it, still holds up, still amazing. Nothing bad to say about Bioshock. It's like a three though. Like once you get past the twist, there's still like five hours of game that is just okay and that's about it. Ah, we caught up, we caught up to the to, to where we are. This is great, we got time to spare. They offered Weird West. Uh, Weird West was one of the games that I was most hyped about going into this year, and it is probably my biggest disappointment of the year. Um, I really tried with this game. I really wanted to love it, but it, in the end, I didn't. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting systems from like a technical standpoint, and there's a lot of like, oh, it's really cool that the world reacts to you doing this, but it doesn't make it a good game. And the controls on PlayStation sucked. Um, I give it a two. Two out of five. Uh, this is, uh, uh, crap. Oh, if you can't even name the game, what are you doing? Uh, this is Deadbolt. Uh, Deadbolt is one of the hardest games I've ever played on PlayStation. It's definitely one of the hardest Platinums. Uh, it's certainly the hardest Platinum I got all year. Um, it is not optimized for a controller at all. <laughs> um, I, I like it though. I like the game. I, it, honestly, it's a two. Like, you can't aim on controller at all. Uh, this is Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi, I played with Will. Uh, it was great fun in co-op. It wiped my save, so it gets docked a point for that. Uh, but in terms of just, like, raw fun, um, Kiwi's at least a three. Uh, it has a lot of grind, though. You have to unlock all of the costumes in the wardrobe, which is what I'm doing here. But... It's still fun, even with that grind. Well, the levels themselves are great, but I'm sticking with a three. 
This is Prey. Uh, so Prey uh, is another game by Arcane Studios. Um, I had held off on Prey for a long time, with a lot of people saying that it's like a masterpiece. If you like Dishonored, you have to play Prey and that sort of thing. I finally played Prey, and I liked it for sure. I didn't love it, and I didn't love Moon Crash. Like people rave about the DLC as well. Um, it's like a solid. It's like a solid three. Yeah, it's definitely not a two. It's a three. Fury. Uh, I don't have a lot of stacks on my profile, but this is the PS5 stack of Fury. I had previously done the PS4 stack. Uh, in my mind, I was going to get first platinum on this, but that didn't wind up happening. I got absolutely decimated by a few hours. Um, but I really liked Fury. They came out with the PS5 stack. They came out with new content at the same time, which was really cool. It was a free upgrade, but uh, definitely recommend Fury. Is it a five? It's a four. Fury's a four. Ooh. A Monstrous Expedition Through Wondrous Exhibitions. Uh, this is a puzzle game that I heard a lot about uh, that finally came to PlayStation. Um, it's really cool. It's a simple puzzle game. Like, you just roll, like, logs and stuff, and that's really all you're doing through the whole game. But if you solve the puzzles in different ways, you unlock different secrets. Like, here we found the last snowman, and we made a friend, which is always fantastic. Love making friends. And I had a great time with it. This, uh, it was, it, it's like a three. It, we're giving a lot of games a three, but now we're talking about Space Hulk. So Space Hulk I played with JP. Uh, Space Hulk is a tactics game where you can't use all of your units. You have to funnel all of your units in like these one wide uh, hallways. So you only have one unit in front and one unit in back and that's it. It really sucks. Like, <laughs> it's not, it's not too buggy. It's like a 1.5 out of five. Oh, this is Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. So, um, my good friend Symmetry, uh, youtube.com slash symmetry, uh, and, uh, and Bruce Man, uh, twitch.tv slash Bruce Man. We're getting back into the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, they wanted to play the Assassin's Creed 4 multiplayer before it inevitably shut down its servers. So I played the multiplayer for Black Flag, um, before I did anything else, and this sort of sparked an Assassin's Creed trend. We did a lot of Assassin's Creed throughout the year. Uh, I'd give it... I'd give it a 2.5 out of 5. I don't like Black Flag. It's it's just okay. Uh, this is Freshly Frosted. Freshly Frosted uh, is one of the top-rated games of the entire year on OpenCritic.com. It is a puzzle game where you make cookies and donuts. It's okay. It does not deserve to be one of the best, most uh, top-rated games of the year. It's easily a 2. It's just okay. It's not even a great puzzle game. It's an okay puzzle game. And like I was saying before, we went back to a lot of Assassin's Creed games. This is me going back to the Ezio collection. So this is Assassin's Creed 2. I've played all of the games before Black, Fi Black Flag on 360. So this wasn't new to me. It was nice to not play any of the multiplayer in the Ezio collection. High praise for that. Um, this reminded me that I liked 2 a lot more than I thought I did. Um, similar to Mass Effect 2, Assassin's Creed 2 is like pretty great. I, I gotta give it a 4. Uh, this is Escape Academy. Escape Academy I played with Will. We did it in like one sitting. Maybe it was two sittings? I don't know. We did it very fast. Um, I love solving puzzle games with Will. He's super smart. We ha we also cover like different bases in like what we're good at. So like it makes puzzle games like this really fast for us. Um, I enjoyed my time with it. It was short. Um, if you Google all the solutions, I'm sure you can do it in like an hour. But it's a fun game. Uh, I give Escape Academy. Uh, let's give it. Let's give it a three. Let's give it a three. And that's because I'm seeing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy now. Uh, I hated this game. Uh, all the reviews said it's like Uncharted in space, and I should have listened because I don't like Uncharted. Uh, turns out, don't like this either. At best, it's a two. Uh, the combat is embarrassingly bad. It's borderline unplayable. The story is okay, but it's not, it doesn't make up for the gameplay. This is Stray, so I'm sure everybody loves Stray. Stray for me didn't really click. Um, you know, the main complaint for Stray is, like, if you weren't a cat, then would it even be fun? But, like, Stray was made with that in mind. Like, from the ground up, Stray is a cat game. Like, that's a weird complaint to me. But I don't like cats. I'm kind of allergic to cats. Kind of allergic. Very allergic to cats. Stray was fine. It's, like, button prompt the game. It's a two for me. I can see why people love it, though. 
Life is Strange 2. Life is Strange 2 is not unplayable, so I don't want to give it a 1, because I know there are unplayable games on my list. Uh, Life is Strange 2 is like a 1.5. I played this a long time ago, maybe not when it came out, maybe when it was on sale at some point. Totally fell off of it after the first chapter. Didn't like it at all. Uh, came back to it this time. Still didn't love it. It was okay. That's about as much as I could say for it. It's, it you really got to push to get through this one. True Colors is way better. Life is Strange 1 is way better. Uh, this is Train Valley, I believe is the name of the game. Um, I kind of bought this game as a joke uh, because like, I like to buy all the train games that are on PlayStation, except for Train Simulator because I know that's impossible and really hard. Uh, train Valley is okay. It's like... You have to manage a bunch of trains in each level to get to their designated ex exits, and it's about managing which tracks can go in which direction at any time. It's okay. It's like it's like honestly, it's a it's a one. Like if we're being fair, uh, the messenger. The messenger is a game that uh, Devil has been yelling at me to play for years, <laughs> definitely years at this point. I'd give it a little bit of playthrough, and I was like, I don't like this. Uh, funny thing about the messenger though is like the more you play the better it is like it just keeps getting better and more fun the more you get into it the messenger is like solid eight like it uh, eight <laughs> eight out of five no it's a solid four is what i mean to say uh this is assassin's creed brotherhood similar things to assassin's creed 2 uh reminded me that like brotherhood doesn't really matter i thought brotherhood was a lot better uh, in my mind than replaying it was here. Brotherhood's fine. It's like a 2.5. Uh, nothing to write or hold about. Doesn't need to exist. Uh, this is Spiritfarer. So Spiritfarer is another one that like a lot of people rave about. Didn't click with me. Um, wanted it to click with me. I tried multiple times to get into this game and it just... it. It wasn't doing it for me. It, it, it's like described as like a cozy management game where like you could take your time with things, but all I did was feel stressed. Like I felt stressed when people were hungry. I felt stressed when I couldn't build something. I was trying to optimize. It's not really like that type of game. It's a it's a game about like going with the vibe. Um, for me, Spiritfarer is like honestly a two, but again, it's another one that I can see why people like it. This is Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, we're like jumping ahead in the Assassin's Creed series uh, before we go back again. Um, I played Origins when it came out. Uh, turns out I didn't have that much for the cleanup. I thought I had a lot left for the cleanup, but like all the cleanup took up less than a day to really get all the things that I still needed. Uh, still sucks though. Still like a two. This is Roller Drome. Uh, Roller Drome is an indie game where you do uh, guns on roller skates. What more do you need to know? It's fantastic. Uh, I really, really love Roller Drum. If it was twice as long as it is, I would love it twice as much. Th there's nothing to complain about. It's it's exactly what it needs to be. It, all the systems work exactly how they should. I think it's a 4.5. I don't think it's quite a 5 for me, but it, it is up there. Oh, inscription. Uh, Inscription is a game that I played on PC last year. Uh, it was in my game of the year list for last year. I love this game. It came out on PlayStation. I was like, I absolutely have to have that on my profile. I beasted through the story, um, and then I was doing the roguelike uh, mode that it has, the like uh, Casey's mod, and that is fantastic. That was my first time through Casey's mod. I love all of the modifications in there. They really let you see Inscription in a new light. Inscription's a five. Inscription is a, is a five out of five. Uh, this is Assassin's Creed uh, Revelations, um, the one after Brotherhood, uh, and it's showing the first-person platforming sections, which were way longer and way worse than I remember, and Revelations isn't that good to begin with. Like, I knew I didn't like Revelations. I thought I loved the the uh, Altair stuff enough to bring it up for me. It's like it's like a it's like a one point five. Uh, this is Tinykin. Tinykin is uh, is like people describe it as like a Pikmin game, but like I think it's closer to other collectathons of the same '90s era um, or early 2000s era, I guess. All of the levels in Tinykin are like the perfect size. They are exactly 
as big as they need to be to like have a lot to do without being so big that they're overwhelming. The only complaint I have about Tiny Kin is that there isn't more of it. I give it, uh, we gotta give it a number. We gotta get, uh, like a 3.5, 3.5 out of 5. Uh, this is TMNT Shredder's Revenge, uh, old school uh, side scroll and beat em up. Uh, we, get, we managed to get a five player co op game going, which was fantastic. I wish we could have gotten six to work at one point because five was amazing. It's just like supers flying all the time. Uh, game was exactly what it needed to be. Uh, easy, easy four. Like, no doubt in my mind, easy four. Ah, Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds, the, my, my baby. Uh, this is a, the PS5 stack of Outer Wilds. I had to play it. I had to see uh, if it ran better on console on the PS5 version. In my opinion, it runs the same. Um, I love Outer Wilds. It is by far my favorite game of all time. If you have not played it, I thoroughly recommend you play it. Uh, it does everything right. I have no complaints. I, I don't want to hear anybody complain about the ship. I don't want to hear anybody complain about anything. It's a five. It's a perfect game. Uh, this is Donut County. Um, Donut County was on my radar for a long time. I never went back and did it. Um, I think what put me off was that I had heard it was an easy platinum. It is a very easy platinum. You can do it in like a sitting. But I liked it for what it was. It's like reverse Katamari, which is kind of funny in its own right. But it doesn't have lasting stuff in my memory. Donut County is like a two. Um, it's not. It's not a bad game, but it's not like doing anything for me specifically. Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb is another one. Cult of the Lamb is a, another one where, like, I can see why people like it. I don't. <laughs> um, it, it's, like, okay for me. Um, if it was just the game that is, like, patched and okay, it would be a three. I encountered, like, multiple progression bugs in this game. It's, like, a one for me. It was unplayable for weeks for me, um, which was annoying when they were when they did patch it i had to uh start a new save i couldn't progress with the save i had which was really annoying um but i, I see why people like call to the lamb uh in its patch state it's a three unpatched when i played it it's a one this is toem uh we gotta hurry up uh toem was uh a game on ps plus liked it didn't love it good not great 2.5 that's what we're rating it it feels right 2.5 just spit out a number Proteus. Uh, I wish my Platinum video for Proteus was better. I played Proteus with Dibble. Um, I loved it the whole time through. This was a Doom clone. Uh, this is one of my favorite indie games of the year. Never mind. This is one of my favorite games of the year. I think Proteus deserves a 5. I, it, It's a Doom clone, and it gets it all right. It gets the secrets right. It gets the weapons right. It's a power fantasy. The enemies are fun. It's total co-op. Um, it's like a five. I think Proteus is a five. This is Telltale Batman 2. Um, I'm convinced I don't like Telltale games. <laughs> I think they're not for me. Um, what I learned with this game, though, is uh, Dibble and our friend Matt, our intern Matt, always say that like the best way to play Telltale games is to pick no answer or pick the ellipses or pick silence. Um, the games are way funnier. You should always pick that option as, as the game figures out how to progress while you choose that option. Uh, Thoroughly recommend under those conditions. Uh, this is Unpacking. Uh, Unpacking is another game that I played with my wife uh, where you think you think that it would bring you together, uh, but actually uh, it just made us yell <laughs> at each other uh, for like, why would you put that item there? Like, that doesn't go in there. That's the kitchen, you stupid idiot. Uh, that's not how we talk to each other, but that... You know, read between the lines. Uh, Unpacking's good. Unpacking is a three? Yeah, that feels right. Tunic. Ugh. Tunic, uh, I, I won't be shy about. Tunic is a masterpiece. Tunic is a five out of five. No doubt in my mind. Um, no game, I'm going to say ever. No game ever has had secrets the way Tunic has had secrets. No game has layered those secrets in such a beautiful way, in such a majestic way. Uh, it finally came to PlayStation after it was on Xbox for like six months. Five out of five for a tunic. Oh, we didn't we didn't give Telltale Batman anything. Telltale Batman's a one. Screw you. Uh, this is Lego Brick Tales. Lego Brick Tales uh, is a fun sort of puzzle game. It reminded me of like uh, Toadstool Treasure Tracker um, on like Wii U. 
where like you have like small diorama puzzles and like they're small scale but then it also had like lego building mechanics it was fun uh three out of five could have been amazing was just okay i was a teenage exocolonist i was a teenage exocolonist oh mouthy title we're just gonna call it exocolonist i made a video for it um the game the core game is really good it's really well written in my opinion the platinum is way too grindy for my for my taste i would say as a teenage exocolonist is like a 2.5 when i factor in the platinum yeah that feels right <laughs> this is back for blood uh this is me boosting with dibble so that way i could get the multiplayer trophies because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play back for blood legit uh of all the left for dead clones that i've played back for blood is probably my least favorite uh, it doesn't click with me. I don't like the cards. I like it a little more now that you get your whole deck at the start of each match, but it still doesn't click with me. There's something that feels off. It's like the weapons feel off or the enemies feel off. They spawn too many guys. Back for Blood's like a two for me. Tormented Souls uh, is one of the games that Dibble has been trying to get me to play forever. Uh, I finally played Tormented Souls in October. Uh, I would rate, I've, I've told him it's just okay, Honestly, Tormented Souls is like pretty great, and the Platinum is pretty great too. It's like a four. It's it's good, and don't tell him I said that. Um, Dibble, if you're watching, you didn't hear that. Uh, it, not from me. Uh, Signalis. So Signalis is a weird one. So normally, and I've said this a few times in this video, like I can see why people like Stray. I can see why people like Cult of the Lamb. I do not understand what people see in Signalis. Um, it's got atmosphere, it's got music, it's a horror game uh, that's very reminiscent of like PS1 horror, and it does that well. But the inventory management is so bad, you have so few inventory slots, that the backtracking just takes away everything from the game. Like, Signals is like a two for me, and that's only because it wasn't buggy. This is Midnight Fight Express. Midnight Fight Express is like, they call it like a John Wick simulator. Uh, it's like a beat em up thing. Um, I had a lot of fun with Midnight Fight Express. It's funny. It's got good music. Um, it is also one of the buggiest games I played all year. And it also had one of the nastiest, um, like one of the nastiest moderators in their Discord. Like you, you reported a bug and he just made fun of you. Um, for that reason alone, Midnight Fight Express is like a one. Uh, but if they patched it, if they fixed it, it's probably like, it's probably like 3.5. It's, it's funny. It, it deserves to be like above average. This is God of War Ragnarok. Um, God of War Ragnarok is another one that didn't land for me. Um, it's like a 2.5. Um, I like moments in God of War Ragnarok. We have a whole video on it, uh, but there are parts that I didn't love. Um, this is the Entropy Center. Um, the Entropy Center was another game that was bugged for me. I've had a really buggy year. Um, this is me like glitching through a door to get the last collectible on a terminal. Um, but overall, aside from this one bug, uh, the Entropy Center is like a portal clone, except instead of portals, you have like a time travel device. And it's fun. I think the puzzles are well made. Um, aside from the bug, it's like a 3.5. This is Save Room. Uh, Save Room was on PC a while ago. Um, it's a puzzle game where the puzzles are Resident Evil 4 inventory management, and that's the whole game. Um, it is a Retallica game, uh, so I put a Retallica game on my profile this year, which is shameful. It borderline unacceptable. Um, Safe Room is funny though, and like really gets what it's doing. It's not amazing. It's a two. It's a two. Um, Norco. Norco's another one where like I don't get it. Like maybe it's going over my head. Um, Norco's a game that people are praising. It's a visual novel. It's like an old Lucas Arts. It's not a visual novel. I'm sorry. It's like a Lucas Arts point and click adventure game. Um, but it's like not good. Like I didn't like the writing. Um, I didn't like uh, anything about Norco. It was a slog to get through. Um, it's like a one. No, it's not buggy. It's like a 1.5. Um, this is Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, this is me doing the DLC for Assassin's Creed 3. Um, boy, did I forget how bad Assassin's Creed 3 is. Um, I remembered not loving it, but 
like replayed it it's like it has held up terribly i don't like it at all it's a two um it's not good it's not a good one uh this is maquette so maquette is a puzzle game um we're like how to describe maquette where like the puzzles are tessellated inside of themselves so like there's a diorama of the room that you're in and if you mess with the diorama it messes with the room that you're in which is really neat and like that goes to like three scales so there's three levels of dimension um cool puzzle game i liked the speed runs in maquette um but the puzzles weren't like too hard usually when i play a puzzle game i like the puzzles to be hard i give it a 3.5 wow out of five. Uh, this is Midnight Suns, Marvel's Midnight Suns. Uh, it is made by Firaxis, the people who make XCOM. Um, Marvel's Midnight Suns reminds me of uh, fighting in tight spaces. Um, it's got like that mix of strategy and card games, but it's kind of just like, <laughs> it's like half the game is bad. So half the game is these dialogue sections like a Dragon Age or a Mass Effect or something. And they're like written really, really bad. Um, there, oh, we gotta get through it. Um, it's okay. Uh, I give Marvel Midnight Suns a 2.5 out of 5. Uh, this is Aliens Fireteam Elite. I played it with Bruce Man at twitch.tv slash Bruce Man and Symmetry at youtube.com slash Symmetry. Um, we had a lot of fun with it. Once we really buckled down and we're like, we're gonna get the Aliens Platinum, um, we really like beasted it through. But like, the game is kind of mean. <laughs> like, it's kind of a nasty game. It's like a 3. There's no way I could give it higher than a 3. Um, this is Neon White. Uh, Neon White was a game I was really excited about for the year. Um, I didn't think it was going to make it to consoles this year, uh, consoles other than Switch, because it came out on Switch and PC first. Um, it's like a speedrunning game uh, where your guns can be thrown away to give you uh, movement tech, so like a double jump or a dash or a grappling hook or something like that. It's a really cool concept. Um, this game wiped my save three times, uh, and for that reason, I give it a one yes i give it a one if it wasn't for that i would give it a 4.5 i think this game is amazing um but other than that uh can't um this is uh the game i just platinum this is sable uh sable is like an open world exploration coming of age story and it's really like it's like a tearjerker um it's got player-based exploration it's like a 3.5 out of 5 though because like by the end of it you start to see the cracks you start to see all the things that you could be doing um but that is it we got through all of them um the final total uh of platinums that we got was 63 63 we got 63 platinums in the year we crushed it the goal was 55 we're way over. Uh, the ball is in your court, Dibble, to get 64 Platinums in 2023, or I am the best. That was a lot of talking. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments uh, how many Platinums you got this year. What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? Yell at me about not liking Stray. Yell at me about not liking God of War Ragnarok. And yeah. We'll see you at the Missing Collectible Game of the Year Awards, otherwise known as the Doom 2016-2022 Awards. See you then.